excited about, everybody. I'm excited about where we are, even though, uh, to be completely honest with you, which I always am trying to be, I was disappointed today because I was under the understanding that we would start today on our exchanges. I was under that impression. Everything was pointing toward it. All the intel was pointing toward it today. It didn't happen yet today. So that's why I was discouraged earlier. Now, it was very slow moving intel until probably 2.30 or 3 in the afternoon when we started to get the reasons for what is happening and why it didn't go like we thought. And so I'm back in a very positive mood, very excitable, very very looking forward to, to everything coming through for us. But to be honest with you, we had uh, some information come in that led us to believe that we were there. And I was thinking we would not even need a call tonight. And you guys may have heard that some other people out there that do calls on the other days, the opposite days from the big call on Monday, Wednesday or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, are also saying they expect tomorrow's call to be their last call. Or so-and-so is not going to be on their call anymore or whatever. And I can see why. Because the information that I'm getting would lend uh, me to believe the same thing, that this should be our last call. This should be it. We'll see how it goes. I told you guys we're going to continue to do calls until the blessing comes. And then we'll take a month or so off uh, to regroup and get everything uh, in place for us for post-blessing projects. But tonight, let's talk a little bit about what we usually start with, and that is Iraq. Iraq has made last week, early last week, the announcements that a body made about the sovereignty of Iraq, about the liberation of Iraq, about the removal of ISIS, and so on and so forth. He's made them at least twice. And uh, so we're not waiting on that announcement. Um, Iraq has been trading their currency on, on screens um, for uh, a little while yet. I mean, just for a few, I'm going to say for about a, uh, three or four or five days at least. And uh, sometimes it'll trade and then it'll come off and not trade for a while. And sometimes it'll resume and, and go again. And we're sort of in that position right now where, where we're uh, sort of not trading the dinar right now. But I'm going to say this. The, they have some dates right now. They had a date, I believe it was the 2nd or the 3rd of December, was a date for a rock. Of course, we blew through that, and that was whatever was, was needing to happen at that time happened. Then today on the 5th was another point of, of attention, and then uh, Thursday is another point of attention, and then Saturday is another point of attention. Now, let's start with Saturday and go backwards. Saturday, the 9th of December, is for Iraq what they're calling National Wedding Day. National Wedding Day. Now, is this where everybody comes down into Baghdad to be married on the... No, I don't think that's what it is. To me, National Wedding Day is more of a day of unity in the Middle East because... My understanding is a uh, hundred or more delegates uh, from uh, the Middle Eastern countries have been invited to come to Iraq, to Baghdad, for uh, some form of get-together, or whether it's celebration or just business meeting. I know that a body is supposed to invite these people to be part of the Iraqi Stock Exchange, which is the ISX. And I know that, of course, the Iraqi dinar uh, should be part and parcel of that uh, ISX, tradability. Um, we have heard that, that maybe, uh, and you know, guys, I can't tell you straight up whether or not the dinar is being, the rate for the dinar is being known throughout the Middle East yet. I mean, I knew about what the rate was, you know, 
at least a week ago, and I've been tracking it for a while. You know that. And so we, we know what the in-country rates are. We know what the screen rates are. We know all that. I'm not trying to get into that. I'm just trying to say, you know, they should be at a point now, or certainly any day now, maybe even Thursday, when, when that rate is internationally known. It, it just has to be there. They're done. They've completed everything they need to, to complete. When they got admitted into the World Trade Organization, when the, uh, when the uh, UN released them from Chapter 7 and put them in Chapter 8, when, you know, all of these different things, the ISX, when it opened uh, last week sometime, I can't remember when it was. I mean, all of these things are signs that Iraq's sovereignty is there. Um, you know, I, I, I just think that... that the fact that, that we don't really see their new rate right now doesn't mean it doesn't exist in country. I know this much. I know that there are Iraqi citizens that will be able to go to their, uh, their cards, their key cards, QI, key cards, and be able to put those in on Thursday and be able to see not only... The, the amount of money that they should see a rate, first of all, obviously if they're Iraqi and they're in Iraq, they're not going to see a U.S. dollar rate necessarily because they're right in country, but they'll be able to be paid on their portion of the oil revenue sharing that is part of Iraq's uh, deal with the oil. Okay, I mean that, I've been told they will be able to see and have access to that portion of the oil revenue on Thursday. Now, that should tell us something about where we are. The fact that it looked like it was going today should tell us something about where we are. Okay? And I, I've, there are other things that may have needed to be completed before we go. I know that uh, we understood that the so-called tabletop meetings on the, on the Zim in five different locations internationally started today. Our understanding was that they were to be completed by this morning, and that just was not the case. They didn't get started until today, so, and that was this afternoon. So I'm thinking, okay, all right, there's part of an explanation. They need to complete before we get started. Uh, and I believe they'll be completed in the next day to day and a half. So that's a very good point uh, to see those occur. And that's everywhere from Hong Kong to Singapore to London to Zurich to New York. And that's really, a, that's really an important thing. It has to do with with those tabletops taking place so that the rates can be set for the Zim platforms that need to take place. Now, in addition to that, we know that the, um, the prosperity packages are sort of on deck and ready to go out in the next day to day and a half. And I believe that those are ready to go, too. My understanding is that when those go, we should be going either in parallel with those going out or there to go out slightly, slightly behind our start for redemptions. It's either going to be right in conjunction with our start or they're going to go slightly behind our start with the redemption. So that's a very, very positive thing. Uh, so I know that there are things happening that are kind of lining this thing up to go still this week. It's only Tuesday, and I do believe that we are still targeted to start this week. And I'm trying not to call it, so I'm not going to do that. But I'm just telling you everything is pointing toward it happening. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about the exchange process. Oh, I've got to tell you a little bit more about this. The money that is flowing 
that has already flowed into banks, redemption centers, and groups has continued through last night and again today in two different what we call tranches. This is the positioning, the movement of money, usually from HSBC to these various bank, other banks or redemption centers or into the uh, groups, okay, into the paymasters for groups. Uh, that is continuing to occur. Money is in place. Money is changing hands. Uh, my understanding is that um, cores are being paid. Uh, my understanding is that, that, like I said, prosperity packages are on deck, ready to go. So it's, everybody's sort of jockeying for position now. Now, in addition to this, we know that when it comes to going in for our exchanges at the redemption centers, we know that they, they have the majority, the vast majority, will be able to do a bank wire for us to another bank. Possibly, they'll be able to do, a, a, I'm going to say, a relatively small wire transfer, which they're actually calling a ledger to ledger now. They're not really even calling it a bank wire transfer uh, as much as they are a ledger to ledger, since most of these are, ha are happening in conjunction with a supercomputer and can happen so much faster uh, with the SIP's uh, new SWIFT system that it's really kind of a ledger to ledger type move as opposed to a bank wire. But we've been using the term wire transfer for so long, that's sort of what we're used to talking about. But we should be able to move a little bit of money to an existing bank account um, on that same day of our exchange. Some exchange centers may not be able to do that for us. They may not be equipped for that. In that case, you can ask for up to five cashier's checks. Up to five. One, two, three, four, or five cashier's checks for up to $10 million each. So if you can't move the money with the bank wire at the time of your exchange, you could ask for a cashier's check. My preference, obviously, guys, for me is going to be to use the wire, to use the ledger to ledger, because it's faster, no muss, no fuss. It happens same day. Funds should be, should be available same day, maybe not. Could be the next day, depending on when you do it. Okay, could be the next day. But the point is, uh, you know, some people like the idea of using a cashier's check, walking into their new bank or even their existing bank and putting a deposit, a, a new deposit down with that check. Just realize that, you know, in the bank, the cashier's check should be available and you should have available funds right away. But some banks are a little funny about about giving you full value on a cashier's check at the time they receive it. They may not until they absolutely make sure that that check, the funds tied to that check are absolutely good and real and legitimate and everything else. So my preference is going to be to do the bank wire, okay, as opposed to cashier's checks. I'm just giving you kind of a plan A and a plan B there. Now, Let's say you want to move some real money to a new bank account or set up a new bank to move some funds to. The day after your exchange, your account should be settled from your exchange itself overnight, and that next day you could do a bank wire to a new bank for up to almost half a, half a billion dollars, like $499 million. You could do, um, I don't know how many, I forgot how many you could do, but you could do one or more of those. Okay, so there's a, that's in your first week. In your first week. If, if you go beyond that first week, I think 
you could move a greater amount of money as needed. Of course, you want to let them know ahead of time what your intention is in moving those funds, always. In fact, initially, if you know you're going to need to move more than half a billion dollars somewhere to another account, to another bank, whatever, let them know that at the time of your exchange, if you know it already. It's always better to let them know what your plans are for the money in the first, as soon as possible, as soon as possible. Because then you'll have uh, the flexibility, they'll be aware of it, they w it won't catch them off guard, and they'll make sure that those funds are not um, in, kept in your structured payout situation, where they have the flexibility to move those uh, funds as needed for you, okay? So if everybody followed what I was saying, you're going to have some flexibility in the first week. Just remember, uh, there will be some limits. Uh, to me, half a billion dollars is doable. That's workable. Four ninety nine, four ninety nine and change million is is still pretty much. That's real money. That's that's real money. And it and uh, unless you're you just have some incredibly big plans right now. Uh, that you need more money for, then you'll be have to you'll have to be held off to the next week. Otherwise, just operate out of your your main motherload account and go from there. The other thing is this: uh, some of the redemption centers will be able to give you a temporary uh, um, credit slash debit card at the time of your exchange, loaded with some funds. I think the amount of funds is going to be up to you discussing that with your uh, exchange bankers to put the amount of funds that you need right away on that card. Permanent uh, credit debit cards, if my understanding is correct, uh, that's my caveat, if my understanding is correct, uh, 20, uh, 48 hours later, say two days later after your exchange, you could be receiving that more permanent card uh, to your home address uh, by uh, Federal Express, and I would think with a signature required. So you would need to be there to sign off, or somebody would have to be there to sign for that uh, FedEx. Okay? So give that some thought, too, in terms of your movement, your travel, and so on uh, a day or two after your exchange appointment. You may want to hold off heading down to the Caribbean or down to the Bahamas for uh, a, a few days till you get that permanent card. Um, one other thing you might want to be aware of, you know, we've used the term black card, uh, meaning sort of an unlimited amount card that you can use. It's got great uh, card benefits and so on. Um, most, uh, I think, two or three companies will have something like a black card I would say this, if it were me, I would try to get a card with the benefits of a black card that might be platinum looking in color so that the black card itself, which might sound cool, is kind of a dead giveaway to people that know about a black card, whereas a platinum colored card is just, um, is just that. It's like everybody else's platinum card. It's not going to draw attention to you, and you don't want it to draw attention to you. So if, if possible, I'm going to try to get uh, uh, one or maybe two high-end quality debit slash credit cards, uh, but, but that are not black in color because I don't want to be, I don't want it to become a target, okay? I want it to be something that would be a gold or a platinum or a palladium colored card, okay? Uh, just something that you might want to consider. So, as far as the redemption centers go, they have been ready, were ready. They were let off today because we didn't go today for 24 hours. They'll be back in tomorrow and have everything ready to go in case. Now, um, it's hard to say because I think, look, We've, we've sort of felt like we're ready to go, and we've had that feeling for a while now, right? And yet we're still here waiting, patiently waiting, ready to go, but still being patient, still waiting to go. Um, I think the Redemption Center staffs 
are about in the same boat that we're in. They weren't happy that we didn't go today. Uh, I know that for a fact. They weren't happy either. But I believe that we are looking like uh, we could go, you know, this week. So I'm not giving up on this week at all. I'm looking to see if this is something I need to know in terms of a text, okay? So I'll just look at that very quickly. I don't think it is, but we'll see. Um, there is just so much going on, I have to tell you, behind the scenes that... that we are really, really in a good place, guys, and I'm staying positive. I'm staying super positive because I know how close we really are. I just feel like we missed an opportunity today, too bad, but we're not out for the week. We're, we're very positive. Iraq is going to do something major uh, on Saturday if they don't do it sooner. They have a tendency to put a date out there on a calendar, and then do it a day or a day or two earlier. That could be the case with the seventh. They've got something scheduled for the seventh over there, and I cannot, for the life of me, remember what it is. There was something for today, something for Thursday, and then of course the national wedding day on Saturday. I'm just going to tell you that I think that with any success. Iraq may do something a little more major on Thursday than, than I'm remembering right now. So I think we're at the point right now where we just have got to stay in this beautiful Christmas spirit, knowing that we're going to have that Christmas we've always wanted, knowing that we're about to receive this incredible blessing and to hang in there and still continue to believe for it like I am, like Sue is, like Bob is, and like Pastor Stephen is. Because not only do we know about it, but a lot of other people out there that are tracking this, like I am, know about it. And they know the timing is really, really close. So let me do this, everybody. I'm going to just ask if Pastor Stephen is still there after this long call tonight.